Coming up in this video, we're going to take a look at some tips on passing a Microsoft certification exam. So stay tuned. Here we go. So hello everybody, this is John Christopher and probably in 25 years I've taken something like 60 to 70 different uh, certification exams from Microsoft to some of the other vendors out there. And so what I'd like to do is just spend a little bit of time and share some, uh, some tips and some experience with you on passing a Microsoft certification exam. Some of these are probably common sense, some of them maybe are not. But uh, the first thing I want you to know is that there is a little mock uh, exam lab environment that you can check out, and I'm going to put a link in the description of this video so you can uh, you can check that out as well. And uh, we're going to jump into this little mock lab environment, and I'll give you some tips along the way. Okay. So um, first thing of note here when it comes to taking a Microsoft certification exam is that uh, you can test online or you can test at a testing facility. Okay, either way, if you are going to test online, uh, you will need to have a webcam. You will have to have kind of a clean environment because um, there is going to be a proctor that will be watching you. They're going to want you to have a, a desk that's kind of cleaned out. They don't want you to have TVs and things like that in the background or they might require you to cover that TV up. Okay, they require kind of a clean environment. They don't want they want to make sure you don't have any kind of notes around <laughs> or any of that stuff. They'll also uh, they might require you to uh, close any software that's running in the background on your computer. So those are just some of the basic things that they'll, that will go on whenever you try to test online. Okay, another thing is when you are taking the exam online, they will not allow you to like mumble or read the questions uh, out loud or even. Um, move your lips while you are uh, reading questions. So those are just some other little things to be aware of. Um, they just want to make sure that there's no cheating at all. And uh, I guess you can kind of use your imaginations on how somebody would cheat if they were doing that. All right. So here's the next thing. you uh, When you take a Microsoft exam, you have the little agreement here you have to take. This is a, like you'll have to sign an NDA non-disclosure agreement. This is where you get into the fact that you're not really supposed to talk about the stuff that you've seen on the exam and all that fun stuff. So you sign the agreement, you would click next. All right, and then here you are, you're on the welcome screen of the exam, and this is where it gives you some information. Now on a typical Microsoft exam, uh, most of the certification exams, you're gonna get um, roughly 50 questions. It's not always 50 questions, it kind of depends. Uh, on the exam you are taking. Okay. Um, now I'm also going to kind of warn you that uh, the foundation exams like the uh, MS 900, the AZ 900, uh, a lot of the 900 exams are a little bit different. Um, there, I'm kind of basing my tips here. Mostly are going to be focused on more of the typical certification uh, intermediate exams to to more expert exams versus the um, the other ones because the the Foundation exams, a lot of them are like true false questions and they're uh, one sentence questions and things like that. So it's not that these tips aren't going to help you for those because some of these, these tips will help you, but a lot of them are very short questions and these tips are going to kind of be more geared towards the more advanced exams. Okay, so just keep that in mind. But anyway, you will get um, roughly 50 questions, okay, and you will get um, roughly a hundred minutes for the exam okay so you can kind of do the math on how long you can spend on that we're going to talk about the fact that you'll get what's called case study questions and all of that as well also real quick if you don't mind please give me a like and a subscribe I'm trying really hard to grow this channel and give you free content and by the way I've got a massive discount going on right now at examlabpractice.com slash courses uh, all you got to do is go there and all the links map to my Udemy courses and um, massive discounts for you to check out. Please give me a like and subscribe also if you can see on the screen right now. Very few people are actually subscribed uh, that watch this channel. So please do that for me. I'd really appreciate it. So uh, anyway, hope you'll do that. So here we are. We're ready to start the exam. We're going to click start the exam. That's fine. We're going to click next. So here, this is just a typical uh, one one answer question that you would get. Uh, you would it ask you a question. 
You have one answer that you can choose from. Okay, notice that you can review later. So here is my first tip, and this is something that I live by and I highly recommend it. The first thing I do is I skim the question and I look to see if this is a topic that I somewhat feel comfortable with. If I skim it and I feel comfortable with it, then I then I go ahead and settle in to answer the question. Okay, um, if if it is a something I feel comfortable with, great. Then I'm going to skim the quit. Then I'm going to go ahead and spend some time on the question. All right, answer the question. Okay, and then once I once I go and I answer the question, I'm ready to move on. Okay, and again, you can kind of do the math. If you got a hundred minutes. And you got 50 questions, you can kinda, you have an idea of how long you can spend on each individual question, right? But here's the other thing. If I skim the question and I'm like, uh-oh, this is a question I'm not comfortable with. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark this question for review. And I'm going to immediately move on. I'm not going to spend any more time on it. Okay? Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to sit here for five, six, seven minutes trying to figure this question out. Well, maybe I've got it narrowed down to two, two answers. Now, here's why you don't want to do that, because you'll run out of time, right? So the beauty of the review later uh, thing, the, re the review later checkbox, is that let's say that you, know, you go through and you knock out, let's say, um, 45 questions. you got five questions left. At the end of this thing, you're going to come across the the screen where you can go back and you can review the questions that you have marked with the review later checkbox. And now let's say you've got 10 minutes left. You got 10 minutes left on your exam and you marked five questions. You now know that, okay, I can spend two minutes on each of those five questions. But if you weren't careful and you spent too much time on, on those questions, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be able to do the math on that and you would run out of time towards the end of your exam, okay? So this is why that's so important. So what I do is I skim a question, okay? Skim those answers. If, it, if, it's, if it's a topic that I'm like, okay, I think I, I know this topic pretty well. I think I'm going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and try to answer it, okay? If I don't feel comfortable with it, if it's not a question I think I can answer very quickly, then I'm going to mark it and I'm going to come back to it later. That's the way I do this, okay? All right. A couple other quick things here of note before I move on. You do have a calculator. It's very, extremely rare that you should ever have to use a calculator on a Microsoft test, just so you know. But you do have that. Okay. Color scheme, reset your answer. You can take a break now during Microsoft exam. That's new. That's a newer capability. If you decide to take a break, keep in mind, you will not be able to review questions later. So I don't recommend taking a break unless you absolutely had to. That's kind of cool that you can do that, though, because that's, a, that's something we, we did not have in the past, okay? But you never know, you know, you got to go, you got to go, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, the other thing is, and they don't have it in this little mock test, but there you do have the ability to hit the MS Learn website now. Um, and I have a YouTube video, and, I, and I'm going to try to remember to put this in the, in the description, but if you've not seen my YouTube video on this, I'll put this in the description, but... You can now go to the MS Learn documentation. You got to be careful with that, though. You don't have a lot of time, so you, um, if you needed to look a fact up really, really quickly, then I would, then you could do that. Now, here's my tip on that. I would not, I would not look anything up unless it's a, it was a review later thing. Okay. So here's the thing. If I've got to look something up on MS Learn, I'm going to review that later. Again, your first pass on the exam should be to knock all the questions out you feel like you can knock out quickly and then review stuff later that you're going to need to look up something on MS Learn. So again, on the real exam, there's going to be an MS Learn button right here. You can click. It's going to open up the MS Learn documentation and you can look stuff up. Okay, so that's how that's going to work. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click next. Here's a multiple choice question. Now here's the key. This multiple choice question has uh, two answers. So notice it says choose you know, which two fruit, right? So you go here, you go here, and you could choose two different fruit. Notice that it will not let me choose more than two. So that's good. The exam doesn't let you make mistakes where, hey, you, you chose you know, two, you know, three answers and now you're wrong or whatever. So that's good. All right, so then we'll go next. Here's a drag and drop question. So these are pretty typical. You'll have drag and drop uh, answers. Um, 
Some questions will require you to fill out all the drag and drop, so you have to put all you have to fill every one of these out. Some of them will not require you to fill out every space, but usually it will let you know. If it's one that requires all of them to be filled out, it will not let you click next. So if you try to click next, it would warn you. So as you can see, this one did not require me to fill all the boxes out, so I was able to click next. Okay. So here's another one. Now this is a um, an order, like put things in order. So there's several steps. Put something in order. All right. Like this is like making a sandwich, right? So I can um, put this in the order that I want to put it in. And then if I, if I mess something up, like I put something in the wrong order, you can move up or move down. That's how that's going to work. Uh, you don't usually always have to include everything here either. But if you do, if all these steps got to be there, it will let you know before you move on. Okay. This is called a hotspot question. So you'll come through here and... Um, there'll be a hot spots. So these are called hot spots and so you can select certain uh, certain uh, items here that you can select these little check boxes alright they're calling these active screens back in my day <laughs> we called these hot spot questions but uh, interactive so these are these are drop down questions right here this is a drop down question where you select an item uh, out of these little drop downs so that's what these are. Um, nothing really special here. There's not really a lot of tips here because you just basically read what the question is asking you and then you select um, what it is that you know they're wanting you to do here. So you'd read whatever it is and then answer the question. Again, same rule applies here. You read the question. You try to be as efficient as possible. Review later if you need to. Now, there is another type of question that I want to tell you about that I don't think is on this mock exam. They're called yes or no questions, and I have a really good tip for these. You're going to see these on a lot of Microsoft exams. These yes or no questions will be in a group, and they'll usually be in a group of about three to five at a time. And it'll be, it'll be some kind of scenario that they're wanting you to accomplish. Okay, They're wanting you to accomplish some kind of... Um, some kind of scenario and uh, the, t the task will involve you performing an action okay it's it's sort of like um, you need to fill up this bucket with and I'm, and I'm not I'm not I can't give you a real example because I don't want to violate any kind of NDA here but you need to fill up a bucket with uh, a liquid and the interesting thing about it is the you know, one answer says something like, you put Lego blocks inside that bucket. And and the, then it says, did you accomplish the task the, the company wanted you to accomplish? Yes or no? All right. So you would say no, because you didn't put liquid in there, right? So the next question is, um, you put coffee mugs inside that bucket. Did you accomplish the task of the company? No, you didn't. And the next one is, you, you put uh, water inside that bucket. Did you accomplish a task? Yes, you did, because you put liquid in there, right? My point is, is the, the inter I have a really interesting uh, tip for you on that. Whenever you come across a section that is yes or no, there's only going to be one yes answer out of that series. There's only ever going to be one correct yes answer. The rest of them are going to be no's, all right? There's only going to be one yes. The rest of them are going to be no's. That's always been my experience when it comes to those. And that's just a tip that I have for you. My experience has always been, uh, and there'll, there'll be sometimes two to three, well, I shouldn't say two to three, usually two series of yes or no questions on a Microsoft exam. And, um, they'll, and the only downside about those yes or no questions, you can't move back on those. So whenever you come across the yes or no questions, you can't move back, and you can't review those later. So whenever you come across those, this little checkbox will disappear. Okay, so just be advised, you will come across, you may come across the yes or no questions. You can't move back from those, and there will only be one yes answer on those. And it's not always the, the last one either. Right, so the first answer might have said you put water in the bucket, and the last two answers were Legos and and coffee mugs. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, so here is another 
little scenario for you. They're wanting you to select something on the screen. So there you go. You could select, um, highlight something, highlight question here. All right. So we'll click next. All right. So here is, so this is called a case study and a lot of these will show up, um, a lot of these will show up at the end of your exam and you'll and nowadays it seems like only one case study is showing up on a Microsoft exam you used to get a couple of these but lately it seems like only one of these uh, now my biggest tip for a case study scenario one mistake a lot of students make when they come across these is they want to read all the case study information first and you just burn a lot of time. So my tip for this is read what the question says. Now, let me back up for a second. What is a case study? A case study is like, and I can tell you this is like as a consultant. This is what it's like as a consultant. You go into a company and the company gives you all this information. Like, you know, this is what we do. This is what we, we as a company do. And this is what we're trying to accomplish. And, you know, as we're hiring you as a consultant to do this job, this is what we need you to do for us. Um, and so they give you all these facts. And so this, a case study is sort of like being a consultant. And they hand you, it's like they hand you a folder with all this information. So really what you want to know is you want to know what is it that this company needs first? So this is this question is, is sort of telling you like what is it they're wanting. So here's what you want to do. You want to read the question first, read the available answers. Now dig in to what it is that they're asking you, right? So read the question and then dig into look in these sections about what it is they're asking you. Okay? That's what you need to do. So right here it says you need to recommend which uh, system center 2012 component must be added to the uh, system center infrastructure to meet. So I would immediately jump into the system center area and start reading right here. Okay, now this I'm not here to teach you SCCM, a system center configuration manager. So we're not going to like dive into this and try to figure this out right now. But um, that's where I would start, right? But that's what a case study scenario is. And then from there you would you would choose your answer and then you would move on. Now it's going to warn you if you don't answer a question. You see that? It's going to warn you if you don't answer a question. Okay, so the next thing is uh, you have an exhibit question. So there's a question and then you have an exhibit tab and it gives you a little image to look at. And then from there, you would view that exhibit and then you would answer the question. Here's the other interesting thing. If you don't look at an exhibit and you try to move on, it will warn you before you move on. So that's one good thing. Microsoft exams are really good about warning you if you don't look at something. Okay. All right. So then here you go. Uh, another question for you. These little exhibit tabs you can look at. Some more little exhibits to look at. And then you answer the question and you move on. So here we go. This is where we have, notice I have one unanswered question. That's good. I can go and answer that unanswered question. I have a question for review. I can go back and I can unmark that for review and then I can change my answer if I wanted to and then I can click next at that point I can click finish click yes and there you go we've now answered uh, our question okay most of the time on Microsoft exams unless it's a beta exam or something like that you will know immediately after the exam whether or not you passed or failed okay all right well I hope this uh, has been helpful to you all right I hope you will give me a like and a subscribe I'm trying really hard to uh, build this channel up and uh, help it grow I've also got that um, huge promotion going on examlabpractice.com slash courses right now huge discount all right please give me a like and a subscribe and I'll talk to you in the next video